With parliamentary elections just over one month away here in France, the left-wing parties have entered a historic alliance. The socialists earlier ratifying the deal. And it means that the party, along with the far left France and Bout, the Greens and the Communists, will campaign under a common program and run one joint candidate per seat. In what many thought would have been unthinkable just one year ago, now the Socialist Party's success is tied to the far left firebrand Jean-Luc Mélenchon of France and Bout. We are telling Jean-Luc Mélenchon that we are ready to help him, we are ready to accompany him, but he must also do so with respect for each and every one. We're going to have to walk together now, and the heavy responsibility that Jean-Luc Mélenchon takes on is that he now has to carry the hopes of the entire left and the Greens. The well, debate over the proposal lasted four hours, with some major party figures in the Socialists condemning the alliance. For more, we can speak to our French politics editor, Mark Perlman. Hello to you, Mark. Um, within this four-party alliance, there are shared and crossed interests, things like pro and anti-EU. How can this alliance hold? Well, uh, it can hold until uh, the elections. That's why it was formed uh, to possibly win as many seats as possible in this crucial parliamentary elections on June 12th and uh, 19. It's historic, uh, yes, because it's not very often that the whole left is uh, united into a single alliance. It's also historic because normally uh, the only alliances in the past have been around the Socialist Party, and now it's around Francis and Bao, the radical uh, left, uh, because they scored 22 percent in the elections and the other parties uh, scored less than uh, five uh, percent, the Socialists going as low as 1.7 uh, percent. So basically, uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon was able to dictate the terms of the alliance and to twist the arms of his allies, uh, be it on nuclear uh, energy for the communists, for example, or on secularism and especially on Europe for the socialists. And this is why you have some former heavyweights of uh, the Socialist Party saying we don't agree with this, uh, former prime ministers Bernard Cazeneuve, uh, Jean-Marc Ayrault say they disagree with it. The former president, uh, François Hollande, who was elected just 10 years ago, just imagine, uh, he said that he disagreed with, and they're probably uh, going uh, to ditch uh, the Socialist Party, maybe uh, create something else, and they are likely to field some dissident uh, candidates uh, in the legislative elections. However, uh, this is now uh, the alliance that you have on the left, and they're aiming to uh, get the majority, that's the official goal. It's much more realistic that what they want is to be the number one opposition to Emmanuel Macron, uh, possibly overtaking Marine Le Pen, who, let's remind our viewers, uh, reached the second round, unlike Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Yeah, and Emmanuel Macron being sworn in tomorrow for his second uh, term. His party recently underwent a name change. It's now called Renaissance. Will that help uh, in these parliamentary elections? Well, if a uh, name change is enough uh, to help your electoral fortunes, uh, people would do it uh, across uh, all countries. Uh, that's certainly not going to be enough. Uh, but it's also an acknowledgement that En Marche uh, was never much of a party. It was just an electoral machine uh, to benefit Emmanuel Macron. Uh, this will not change because they're now called uh, Renaissance. What's more important is that they've reached an agreement uh, with their uh, ally, the Modem, the uh, centrist, center-right party. Uh, they were allied uh, with the Modem back in 2017, but also uh, they're allied with a new party created by Emmanuel Macron's first prime minister, Edouard Philippe, who came from the conservative camp uh, to be prime minister and created his own party called Horizons, uh, that's another uh, name, uh, they've made an agreement whereby they would field uh, joint candidates. Emmanuel Macron's party, now called the Renaissance, will have the overwhelming majority. The Modem will have 100 or so uh, constituencies. And Edouard Philippe's new party will have 58 uh, constituencies while they will uh, run uh, just a single uh, candidate. So that's much more important because they need uh, to have this strong and coherent majority. Emmanuel Macron made history by becoming the first president elected without a sitting majority in parliament. He wants to make sure he does not lose that majority because they, that would be really the worst nightmare uh, for him. He now faces uh, an alliance on uh, the left, which is probably why they hurried this alliance on the centre-right. And let's not forget the national rally of Marine Le Pen. Uh, they only have a handful of MPs. They're certainly hoping to get more. All uh, the uh, analysts are saying that 
Emmanuel Macron should retain uh, the majority, uh, but there's not really a fight. And now we know uh, who the players are uh, for the legislative elections. It will be crucial, maybe not as crucial as the presidential election, but clearly very important for the next five years. Yeah, and just under five weeks away. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. Mark Perlman, French 24, French politics editor.